This is the second instructional video on quantum nuclear physics, or also known as light. In this one, we're going to talk about the electromagnetic spectrum, and um, in particular, an idea called spectroscopy. What spectroscopy does is it allows uh, astronomers, in particular, to look at distant gas clouds or planets or stars and know exactly what they're made of without actually having to go there. <coughs> so, um, a few things you gotta know before I continue on with this is you need to understand that electrons have energy levels and as they drop from a high energy level to a lower energy level the result is they emit light. They are also capable of absorbing light by as the light hits them they would go from a low energy level and jump up to a high energy level when they do this they usually do not stay at the high energy level very long and they'll drop back down and re-emit the light but oftentimes they re-emit it in a different direction so let's take a look at how this happens first this is the full spectrum of visible light now I'm only going to show you this on the visible light spectrum but please do note that it happens across the entire spectrum it happens for radio waves, uh, infrared, um, ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma. As for how do we get a spectra, um, a spectrum to look at, we use a spectroscope, which is a device that basically you can think of it as has a prism inside. And the prism breaks up the light into uh, all the colors of the rainbow and it displays it on a screen for us to look at. So this is what the full spectrum looks like for visible light. Sorry about that. And you got your red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And uh, please note there's an an infinite amount of colors. I just put the Roy G. Biv on here. So there's, you know, infinite amount of shades of red, of orange, of yellow, and so on and so forth. But to keep it simplified, I just stuck with this. So here's how it works down here is Earth. Over here is a star that's far, far, far away. It's not our own sun. It's just a star far away because we need some kind of light source. There are two gas clouds present in this problem. One of them is in between us and the star itself. And the other one is off in some other corner in space. So the star radiates light in all different directions and it radiates it as white light which white light would be composed of the full spectrum now if there was nothing in our way between us and the star we would see the full spectrum when we looked at the sun through the spectroscope I'm sorry not the sun just another star now as this beam of white light hits this gas cloud most of the colors of light are going to break through. We'll see some oranges break through. Whoops. We'll see uh, yellows break through. We'll see some greens break through. Um, some blues. So what's going to happen is when we look at this star we're going to see almost the entire spectrum but there might be some blue light that gets scattered off in various directions there might be some violet light that also gets scattered off in different directions there might be red light that's scattered off in different directions so when we look at this through a spectroscope we're going to see almost the entire spectrum except for maybe a little bit of red a little bit of blue and a little bit of purple or violet rather please remember in this diagram we would still see on the absorption spectrum a lot of red we would just be missing one or two specific uh, bands of red or shades of red if you want to think of it that way now, 
another unique feature is every element creates its own special spectrum because every element has its own set of electron energy levels. So for example, as we look at this absorption spectrum, and it's called an absorption spectrum because this gas cloud has taken the red, the blue, and that violet and scattered it off in various random directions while allowing the rest to pass through. So on our perspective, it absorbed the red, the blue, and the violet. Sorry again. So, <coughs> I apologize about that. I was having some technical difficulties. Um, as I was saying, each atom or each element has its own set of unique energy levels, which means anytime we see an absorption spectrum or an emission spectrum, in an absorption case, we're missing one band of red, one of a bluish indigo, and one of a violet. Or if it's an emission spectrum, we only have one band of red, that one band of bluish indigo, and that one band of violet. We know it's hydrogen. Hydrogen is the only element in the entire periodic table of elements that do that. And each element has its own unique signature. So, in this particular case, the star shoots light into the gas cloud. A little bit of light gets scattered. Most of it gets through, reaches Earth. When we look in that gas cloud, we will notice that we see almost the entire spectrum. We're missing a little bit of red, a little bit of an indigo, a little bit of a violet. Now, let's instead focus on what happens as light hits this. So what this gas cloud would do, um, in particular the way I have it set up, yellows will be fine, your greens are going to be fine, your blues and your indigos will be fine, your violet's going to be fine. But what will happen is you can get some red that scatters off in various directions. And you're also going to get a little bit of orange that shoots off in different directions. The result for our perspective as we look towards this gas cloud is we don't see this big chunk of the rainbow. We only see a little bit of red, a little bit of orange, and our spectroscope is going to show this. These one or two bands of red, a band of orange, again, there are essentially an infinite amount of shades of red, infinite amount of shades of orange. So we would still, um, you know, red light would still pass through this gas cloud, but a particular shade or two of red light would be scattered off in random directions. So as we look at this gas cloud here in red, we would see the emission spectrum because we see these colors of light that got scattered in random directions. Whereas opposed to when we look at the blue gas cloud, we see an absorption spectrum because all of the light got through except for these three bands of light. <clears throat> so by doing this, we can actually get ourselves a very good image of what is going on um, in a faraway gas cloud, a faraway planet, what its atmosphere is made of, and so on and so forth. Now the last thing I'm going to wrap this up with is let's go ahead and take our little gas cloud here. Actually, we'll just remove it. It'll be easier. And let's say this gas cloud is actually a mixture of the two things we just saw. <coughs> now, as white light from our star shines into the gas cloud, we're going to produce an absorption spectrum.
but what will be different is we have two different types of gases in here. So we might get some blue scattered randomly, some red scan scattered randomly, maybe a little bit of orange scattered off in random directions. Green goes through no problem. Yellow goes through. We might get some shades of blue or indigo to go through. The purple, the way I have this set up, is going to scatter in random directions. What we're going to see is still an absorption spectrum, but we're going to see a combination of the two spectrums of the two different gases. So our hydrogen and then our other mystery element. So if you look at the full spectrum, we would have this hydrogen component you see here, as well as now pieces of the spectrum that contain the frequencies of light that we're fitting to the other gas. So now our spectrum will look like this, which is a combination of hydrogen and our mystery atom that we used in the other example. So it gets a little more complicated because you can have seven or eight or even more different gases or chemicals mixed together. So the spectrums can get very confusing. But again, each atom has its own unique a set of energy levels therefore it creates its own unique spectrum so you look for the characteristics in the spectrum that highlight those specific features for example as I look at this absorption spectrum I would see there's a characteristic purple band there's a characteristic bluish indigo band and there's definitely some red bands in there hydrogen's a very good fit as being one of the gases in here there's an orange band here so I'll take a look and see what atoms would absorb or emit an orange band of light. And I'll take it from there and see what else does this uh, spectrum show that I'm viewing as well as what the atoms themselves do. So please remember this material will be on the test. We will not talk about it in class, uh, but it will be on the test. So make sure you understand it. Email if you have questions and enjoy taking the pre-flight quiz. Thank you for watching.